cancel. Sweezy. Let's get into the news. So if you don't know, uh, with this show, if you're new to the show, uh, basically what I do is I uh, go through all the news I deem important in the week. Um, and by going through it, I read the headlines and see if I like it that much. And then I read the article. What most people don't do when they see an article, they just uh, get their news from the title alone. Ah, uh, We're going to be proactive and actually read the article of the show. And so uh, without further ado... Uh, let's get going on to, uh, let's get into the news. Uh, everything you could say last week today, last tonight, but I think that one's taken, uh, by a guy who was in this TV show community. Um, but there's also, um, uh, last week, the week before right now, maybe we'll call it the week before. Welcome to the week before right now with Shweezy, AKA the four play King. Let's get into it. Um, this one's funny. Um, uh, article written by the Hill, but it's about BBC, which like I learned pretty early, like even before the whole fake news shit started. Um, well, no, it was around. It's just only Republicans were listening to it, but, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say Republicans. Only our words would read it. Um, but BBC was supposed to be like one of the good ones. Like they're very neutral in it. And it's like a good source to like look at news from. Um, so it says here, uh, BBC apologizes for interview with fake Cory Booker. All right. Uh, I thought this was funny. I want to know the full story. Well, let's get into it, folks. The BBC has apologized for airing an interview with someone posing as Senator Cory Booker, Democrat from New Jersey, on Friday. According to a post on the BBC website, the interview only aired at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time last Friday, but was not used any other time. In our News Hour radio program, with an E in the end, on Friday, a man claiming to be Senator Cory Booker was interviewed and what appears to be a deliberate hoax. The BBC wrote in a post it called a correction and apology. We have apologized to Senator Booker and are looking into what went wrong to make sure it doesn't happen again. The message was posted to the BBC website over the weekend and the network made an on-air Mia Culpa Monday. Why would you use that word? I'm assuming you're meaning like apology. Um, you just use the word apology in your articles. Don't be fucking doing a Josh and like using like a big word that makes no sense for any human being to use in a conversation. So don't, don't be, don't be Josh Casey. Uh, the BBC declined to comment on how the incident occurred or when the faux U S politician was booked. Press representatives from Booker's office did not immediately comment on the incident. This was not the first time ho hoaxers have managed to appear on national news shows. Last December, an animal rights activist posed as the CEO of Smithfield Foods to appear on the show of Fox Business anchor Maria Bartiromo. Before the show ended, Bartiromo became aware of the hoax and told viewers she had an important correction to make. It appears we have been punked. Yeah, because you're working with fucking Fox, you bitch. Um, all right. Anyways, um, how do you pull that off? So was this like an in-person or like Zoom type interview? And you just realize you're interviewing the person I'm like, I don't think this guy's Cory Booker. <laughs> Like, couldn't, couldn't have fucking Googled an image of him. I feel like that way, too. I feel like I get it, because you, if you do any type of, like, interview type show, um, you, you do have, like, you're not always necessarily a fan of the person you're going to interview, um, but I always say, uh, do a little research beforehand, and also, if you're coming on a show, I've had people, like, with the Schweig cast do this, like, they know nothing of the show, I'm like, should I bring my guitar, am I doing a performance, um, I mean, I kind of give them the gist of what's going on, but, like, one, no, one time I was, oh, I, I can't remember the, the artist's name, but I don't really care for them either, uh, but they, so we were basically, we had an interview scheduled, uh, and then, so basically what I do is because I'm the one dealing with everything I'm like, Hey, we still good for tonight. You need anything, you know, just being like a good person, just making sure everything's going to be smoothly. And then, um, they're like, yeah, we're ready. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, here's the address we'll be recording at. Just meet me here this time. If you're a little late, that's okay. Better late than early in my, you know, in my home. And then she's like, Oh, I thought this was a phone interview. I'm like, what? When did we ever say this was a phone interview? Like, you think I'm like a fucking radio station? Like, wanting you to call in to talk about your bullshit? Shut the fuck up. All right. I'm done with this. I'm done with that. That's just like podcast, like dealing with artist shit that makes it so hard to actually like maintain like consistency with the Shwedcast. Don't get me started on that shit. Um, 
Here we go. Next one. Octopus steals camera and wins underwater photography competition. This is from Scuba News. Uh, from what you know is the best news. <sighs> Just finished off a strawberry Bud Light seltzer. We are looking for alcohol sponsors on all my shows that I basically just drink on the show. Basically, you just send me free booze and I drink it on the show. That's all we need. So if you're interested, if you own a brewery or anything, contact uh, the Schwedcast at gmail.com uh, for further inquiries into what we can do for you here at uh, Schweezy's Podcasting Universe. So uh, let's get into this. Octopus steals camera and wins underwater photography competition from Scuba News. All right. This year's Ocean Art Underwater Photo Competition managed to produce some amazing underwater photos that showcase the perseverance of underwater artistry amidst the adversity of the times of the times. Uh, someone texted me. Oh, people want to play Fortnite tonight. Um, two winning photos told particularly compelling stories. The Best of Show by Gatano Dario Gargiulio. Foreign name. I'm, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to butcher it, is a once-in-a-lifetime moment where a curious octopus took a selfie of itself with the photographer's family. On the day of the photo, I remained in the tide pool as the tide was too low to venture outside of its boundaries. In one of the shallowest parts of the pool, I noticed an octopus. I placed my camera near its den, and the octopus started interacting with it. It came completely out of the den, and to our amazement, it started shooting pictures. My son, three-year-old, in the background... Uh, I'm not showing the photo, folks. Um, you Google that show on your own. I'm, that sounds like more post-production work on my end. Was very curious about the octopus. Uh, uh, Gaten Dario Gargiulio. Uh, so, so, yeah. Um, nevertheless, though, um, that's cool. I think that's that's more or less, I feel like that's a cool thing happening. It's like, I'm just, throw the camera out there and then he picks it up and starts taking pictures he's self-aware what if animals are getting intelligent and then like do an uprising like in planet of the apes i haven't watched any of those movies by the way i'm just guessing what happens and i just assume uh the 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 uh monkeys become intelligent and try to overthrow the human race that's why i assume happens in the movie um but uh, i don't know what happens i assume that sounds like it makes a lot of sense um from the Wikipedia articles I've read on it. So, uh, nevertheless, he persisted. Um, I don't know how much more I have to say about an octopus taking photos. Um, I mean, that's some, like, f that was in Finding Dory. Wasn't the octopus taking, doing shit like that? Finding Dory? I believe he was in Finding Dory. That was, like, an okay movie. Uh, fuck Toy Story 4. Fuck Toy Story 4. That movie, that movie annoyed me. Woody, you are not a ride or die. Which is an EP of mine out on all streaming platforms. Uh, so fuck Woody. Um... And go listen to my music. Uh, that's what we have to say here. Uh, Steve Vai injured himself and needed surgery after holding a difficult cord and meditating on it for 20 minutes. That's from Music Radar. Uh, is it a quality source? I don't know. So uh, let's go into the article. In what might be the most literal example of the term sustaining an injury, Steve Vai has injured his hand while fretting a difficult guitar chord and holding it for 20 minutes. Vai says he was meditating on the chord when time got away from him, and after taking his hand off the fingerboard, he discovered he had developed trigger finger. The U.S. maestro was speaking to Tyler Wilson of Music Is Win for season two of it's uh, Guitar Villain's YouTube show when he revealed his musical misadventures. Oh, yeah, me and uh, yeah, me and uh, Tyler, we go to the same uh, guitar center. Found out he lives here in Nashville, and I found out we we go to the same guitar center. So um, that's just me name dropping someone I don't know <laughs> personally. I just know one mutual fact about ourselves. <laughs> which is very natural. I mean, you know, me and him go to the same guitar center. I'm like, who the fuck cares? Um, it all started with the acoustic guitar and some experimentation. After all, what is Steve I, if not a frontiersman for new technique and sounds? It is a lot harder to play with acoustic guitar than I thought, said Vi. There is nothing virtuistic in it, but that's how I screwed up my hand. I was doing this fun thing, and I had to put my thumb in this really weird position, and I had to be kind of had to kind of hold this cord really long for a time i was meditating on it and i knew it was a hard position and i kept on sitting there and playing it 
and playing it. Vi, according according to Vi, 20 minutes passed long enough to have sprained the tendons and developed trigger finger so severe that he needed surgery to correct it. Mild cases typically involved a splint, but Vi says the operation was a success. He's going to have to wait it out before he can start farting cords again. Uh, they did the operation and they cut in there and the guy is fooling around with everything in there and it was it's really bizarre, but it's all fine. It was something very simple that they can fix, but I won't be able to play for a while. Nonetheless, he has a lot of music in the works. In the interview, he spoke about stri stripping everything back for a minimalistic acoustic album, and he has also revealed plans for an album of eight-string material. This enforced layoff, however, might give Vi a chance to use his practice technique that can you can do without a guitar. Okay. So, Steve I is, I'm not going to say he's old, I don't know how old he is, but I'm assuming uh, he's in a different generation than me, and I'm, I'm very picky, like, I don't like doing, like, sports and stuff like that, because I don't want to get, like, inj I don't like, you know, like, you're goofing around with your friends, you can get hurt and stuff like that, I'm like, I don't want to do that, that sounds like an injury waiting to happen, and uh, I like playing guitar, <laughs> and uh, I like playing piano, I like playing a lot of things, and, um, Music is important to me, and I, that idea would be that sounds like something you would do as a young guy, and then you're like, and then you realize like, okay, my arm is very a unique process. Like, like squeezing like this, he uses like the entire arm. It's not like you're squeezing the entire arm. It's not just like these muscles right. Here. I mean, it includes these muscles right here, but it's including your entire arm. So stuff like that, holding a cord in a weird position like that. Um, the nice thing when you use like. Typically, when you play guitar, there is a lot of tension in this kind of area, um, but there's kind of like a fact that you're moving around a lot that really helps. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let this be a lesson to everyone, so do not do that shit. Um, I remember my band director in high school, like, he got, like, tennis elbow um, from, like, conducting, which, I mean, typically you get it from playing tennis because you're, you know, you're moving your wrist like that, and you have to realize it's your entire arm. It's not just like your wrist like so he was like so he, i guess he got that because it makes sense with the conducting and but i'm assuming there's more tennis players than conductors out there i'm gonna make a just a wild guess about that, that there's more uh, tennis players than conductors so uh yeah so um let this be a listen to everyone out there uh don't be an idiot and uh kind of understand like if you're a musician like understand how your arm muscles work and how your leg muscles work you just like you know you just have to know the fucking basics Okay, folks, that's all I have to say on Steve Vai and the guy I go to the same guitar center as, so that's all we have to say right now. All right, here's our last article for the day. This is good uh, for a lot of people. It's from WTRF, which I assume is out of somewhere in North Carolina. Um, smoked at least 100 cigarettes in your lifetime? Then you can get vaccinated starting March 24th in North Carolina. North Carolina is moving to vaccinate those in Group 4 against COVID-19 beginning on March 24th. As part of that group, if you are a smoker, current or former, who has consumed at least 100 cigarettes in your lifetime, you too can get vaccinated, according to the North Carolina Department of Health of Human Services. The vaccination changes come as President Joe Biden announces Tuesday that the U.S. is on track to have enough COVID-19 vaccines doses for every adult by the end of May. Biden added that he would like to see enough vaccine doses for every educator and school worker to receive the first dose of the vaccine by the end of March. He said he would direct every state to prioritize educators for vaccination. Also on Tuesday, Merck and Company Incorporated announced it will help make rival Johnson & Johnson single-shot COVID-19 vaccine in a partnership. President Biden called an example of good corporate citizenship. The government will invoke the Defense Production Act to equip Merck's plans to be able to produce the Johnson Johnson vaccine, Biden said. Group 4 North Carolina is also composed of adults 16 to 64 years old at high risk for exposure and increased risk of severe illness. Homelessness and incarcerated people who have not been vaccinated are also included. NCDHHS also shared clarifications for Group 1 and 4. The definition of long-term care in Group 1 has been updated for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Higher risk medical conditions for group four include intellectual and developmental disabilities, including Down syndrome and neuro neurological conditions such as dementia. 
This week, the federal government authorized the distribution of Johnson & Johnson, or Janssen, I don't know why they put that there, one-shot vaccine in more than 80,000 doses are expected to arrive in the state beginning Wednesday. Fauci answers, can you have a dinner party if you're vaccinated? Question mark. And then Fauci says, a third COVID-19 vaccine means North Carolina can get more people vaccinated sooner, which will save lives and slow the spread in said North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Secretary Mandy K. Cohen, MD, in the release. Cooper says he will continue to advocate to increase vaccine supply in North Carolina since January 20th. The amount of vaccine received by the state has increased by 135%, according to data from NCDHS. <coughs> okay. I just burped through the line. That's how you know I'm nearing 30. Um, That's cool. But, like, I don't know if I don't think I've ever smoked 100 cigarettes. Um, But I the idea in my mind is, like, someone just, like, binge smoking cigarettes, like, let one. I need the vaccine. Ugh. And they're just, like, coughing like crazy. I can't stop now. I'm addicted. <laughs> just doing that. They're doing one with fat people, too, I think, in California. They're going to let them. It's like, well, maybe I need to gain some weight for my health. And... <laughs> That's a good joke, but I feel like, I think I had a conversation with some friends. It's like, I think the, I've been hearing about they've had to throw out some, a couple vaccines just because storage and shit like that weird thing. So, um, I, we're getting to a point, I think they're mass producing this shit on a high scale. Um, don't feel guilty if you get it before someone else. Okay. Just, let's just all try to get it. I think I'm at the point, I think I'm going to just f- figure out how to, how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do this folks. And, uh, that's how I'm going to do, that's how I plan to be they're like you're you're young but i have some other problems i could probably justify it with so uh in the words of uh musician i don't know if he's if he can, he's considered a rapper i'm putting musician artist black bear fuck you and you and you i hate your friends and they hate me too all right cool What's going on, my fellow Schwoke Lord? Hope you enjoyed that highlight from one of the great shows that I make. Uh, if you want to watch more clips or even full episodes, go check them out over here and down below and everywhere else. Uh, stay awesome.